Hello viewers, welcome to another episode and this is going to be a favourite of everyone, the teardown. So we've picked up this camera um, a few days ago and uh, we're going to tear it down and uh, see what it's all about on the inside. Right, so we have here a Nikon digital camera DXM1200. For the keen eye of you, uh, you'll notice that this does not look like a normal camera and it's not. Um, this is a video camera which is used on a microscope uh, to uh, be able to capture digital stills um, of the microscope subject that you're looking at. Um, so these are specifically designed to sit on top of the microscope. They'd generally be positioned above on a, like a trinocular microscope. So you'd have the normal viewing and then this would sit on top and allow you to take a high resolution digital photo. So this would have been used in conjunction with a PC. Um, this would have connected through to a computer uh, with an interface card on it. And that would have provided software for doing all the actual exposuring and all that sort of stuff, actually taking the photo. Now the specifications on this are, um, it's um, 12 megapixel, um, which considering this dates from 2000, um, that's actually quite a high number, but it's not as quite as um, cut and dried as that. I'll get into that in a, in a moment. Um, so uh, I think the cost of this camera was probably about seven thousand um, dollars in 2000 so yeah not a cheap camera at all uh, but of course that would have included the interface card and all the software that ran it so to pull a few excerpts out of the marketing blurb for this microscopists who have been asking for a color digital camera that offers a resolution nearly equal to film will welcome the new Nikon DXM 1200 um, blah 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 um, designed to meet demanding needs, blah, blah. The DXM1200 uses Nikon's new IPS high density imaging technology, which is interpixel stepping, to provide breathtaking or original digital images, true to life, extremely high quality 12 megapixel resolution photographs are sharp enough to be blown up and printed poster size, etc., etc. Other features include automatic sequential shooting at intervals from one second to approximately 100 hours, 14 easy to select resolution settings from 3840 to 3072 uh, to 640 by 480, uh, 10 fine modes for ultra high resolution, four quick modes with a suggested retail price of $6,900. There we are, there's the price. Now the interesting thing about this is um, it's not a 12 megapixel camera. Um, if you start to go and delve into the actual specifications, um, the output resolution is 12 megapixel, which is uh, 3840 by 3072, but the actual sensor um, is 1280 by 1024. And I, I suppose now I hear everybody there going, oh, it's just interpolated rubbish. And um, that's why I thought as well, but when you actually start to read into it, there's a little bit more to it than that. So reading more of the marketing blurb for this camera, it seems what uh, Nikon have actually done in, in, for this setup to achieve the high resolution, relatively low resolution CCD is actually to move the CCD while it's taking the actual image. So I think what they're doing is um, the CCD is mounted on a movable structure, uh, which allows the CCD to move um, left, right, up and down so uh, if we just look at this little grid, which represents one whole of the picture elements um, of the CCD. Now what um, they're saying is they've got an actuator which allows them to move the CCD um, left, right, up and down. Um, so in its default position, it'll take um, a sample here and then um, there'll be some kind of actuator which pulls the CCD that way. Um, and then that allows you to take a different image um, of the actual whatever the light's coming through the through the lens and you take nine pictures so you've got the center position and then one two three four five six seven eight um, to give you nine in total and you interpolate all those together to give you a 12 megapixel uh, image so it's quite clever uh, it'll be interesting to see when we take this apart exactly how they're doing that there's some talk that it's uh, pizza electric um, I don't know we'll, we'll, we'll see when we take it to bits but if you consider um, how much this is actually going to be moving, they say it moves by one third of a pixel. 
which if they're using this arrangement, that's how it's going to be. Um, I've not found any actual um, pixel size for this CCD, but um, it's going to be small microns, um, so moving a third of the pixel is going to be a tiny, tiny movement. Um, there's no way you'd ever be able to see it. Um, so, uh, yeah, I would imagine Pizza Electric is probably what they're using. So when I pick this up, uh, there's no interface card with it. It's literally just the camera on its own. Um, yeah, you never ever seem to get uh, the interface card with these types of camera. I know Mike's Electric stuff has um, had things like this before, and you never ever get the interface card. I, I think there's some kind of uh, repulsive force between the camera and the interface card. They always want to repel each other and disappear um, into their own separate domains. So yeah, I've only got the camera on its own, so there's probably little chance of me actually being able to use this. The interface cards are available on eBay, but the, the sellers just want crazy money. You know, like $600 for one of the interface cards. It's like, you're having a laugh. Incidentally, the lens mount on this is just standard C mount, so you could potentially screw in pretty much any C-mount lens um, onto this. Right, so before we um, open this up, uh, we've got uh, obviously the C-mount on the front, uh, we've got a tripod mount on the bottom, um, and we've got the connection that went over to the PC. That is just a standard 15-way connector there, um, which would have had a cable over to the interface card. And that is it. There's nothing really else on it. So let's get a screwdriver. Um, our, I would imagine this is going to come apart in two halves. I must admit, I am in two minds whether to actually do a destructive teardown on this. Um, if I could manage to pick up one of the interface cards, it might be interesting to see how well it works. But I guess the problem is the slow update rate, um, because these, uh, from reading the, the spec on this, um, I think you can get 12 frames per second out of it, so it's probably a bit slow, and there's there's so many cheap microscope cameras coming out of China now, it's, um, it's probably not really worth it, but it would have been fun to compare. So we've got a small pressed steel frame. Um, I can see one board on the top here and there's another one underneath. Um, the CCD is mounted here and there is some kind of electrical structure going on there. I can see a couple of wires running over to a thing just in there and there's another one down there. The CCD comes out on this flex to the top board so that's gonna be all the CCD drivery stuff. Um, so presumably the power and all the rest of it is underneath. So let's take um, the end bits off. See a bit more in there. Um, looks like that board isn't actually mounted on anything other than the connectors. Interesting. Uh, but we do have this big rubbery thing, um, which presumably made contact. Yeah, so that would have prevented it coming off anyway. Yeah, so if we look here, we've got um, these two connectors just here that come from this top board down onto a couple of actuators which are attached to the structure that the CCD is on. Um, so there's two of those, one down there and one up at the top. So I'm just gonna take the top board off, slowly wiggle, wiggle out. Yeah. Right, well there's not a lot going on the bottom there. It looks all like power supply stuff to me. Um, 
yeah lots of capacitors inductors and diodes and stuff so uh, that looks all about power supply to me so um, yeah obviously the um, the interface board on the PC will be supplying um, power down this this cable so that's probably going to be something like 12 volts or something maybe and then this will um, regulate that down to whatever you need for the uh, P the CCD and all the electronics that control it. Um, incidentally, I have no idea what the interface um, mechanism is on this cable. Um, uh, obviously, you're going to be needing um, power, ground, there's going to be some kind of control um, signal, which is probably some serialized um, command thing. It might even be RS-232 that's just sent over the same cable, and then there's going to be some kind of um, image data which is then transferred to the card. I would imagine given there's not a huge amount on on here that it's going to be pretty basic um, raw data. Um, that is probably also parallel I would I would guess. And interestingly the specification doesn't detail how many bits of colour value we have so um, I'm not sure whether it's 8 bit, 10 bit. Right so if we take a quick look at the driver board that we've got here and this is a perfect opportunity to mention my channel sponsor, PCBWay, um, who offer all sorts of um, fast turnaround prototype PCBs um, of all descriptions, multi-layer, um, flex PCBs, um, SMD stencils, and all of that sort of, sort of thing. Um, so if you're in the market for anything like that, go and check them out. The links will be in the description. So if we have a closer look at this uh, board here, we've got um, on this side, we've got one, two, three, four, five Sony chips here and a load of electrolytics around here. The, this is the connector that, for the CCD. So I'm gonna guess that um, this part here is for the actual CCD element to actually take the image data in. Um, whether that's processed, more on board here, um, I'm not sure. It might just be sent straight down that um, data cable to the PCI card and all the processing is done there. Uh, we've got an Altera EPM 7000 series um, PLD here. Um, so it's got some programmable logic. Uh, we've got an NEC D78P014, which is a microcomputer controllery thing that has 32K of internal PROM and 1K of RAM and some other little 74 series stuff here. So it's possible that these, these bits here are literally just for controlling that uh, piezoelectric element uh, for moving the CCD around. And all that's on the bottom are some passives and some uh, small transistors. Nothing really much to speak of. So looking at this in a bit more detail at the front, um, looks like it mounts there, 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 and there. So I'm just gonna take the whole assembly off um, and then we'll have a look, bit of a better look at this, uh, this structure that they've got going on here. Okay, so we can definitely see what's going on here. Um, we have the this pressed steel mounting base, which the C-mount adapter is mounted on, that's underneath. Other base here, we have this other structure which looks to be made mostly out of um, thin stainless steel. Um, and then the CCD mount is mounted on a steel plate, uh, which is then mounted on the, uh, the stainless steel structure. Um, so we've got two actuators here, um, we've got one here, this thing in green, and we've got another one up there with just two wires going to each one. Uh, there's lots of little set screws and calibration screws and stuff. Um, so what this is doing, this pushes down on here onto this long bar. Um, so presumably if that extends, it will push this bar um, downwards uh, towards the bottom of the picture as you see it um, which will then pull the CCD downwards so if I just um, do this you can should be able to just see hopefully it moving that way and again if I move it this way 
It's a little bit harder to see it in that direction, but uh, you get the idea. So that will allow you to move it in um, to any of those nine positions. So, that, so the center position would be one, um, and then you've got eight positions all around it. Now, one interesting thing I've noticed is this bar here is quite loose. Um, I expected this to be under some kind of tension, but it's it's not, it's pretty loose. So any movement I would have thought would have been negated by the slack that's in that, but it's possible that when this actually uh, starts up and it's under software control, it might actually preload these um, to a sort of a preset value. So it takes out all of the slack in the system. So um, yeah, unless I had a, a working a working setup, I wouldn't really be able to see that. So yeah, obviously what's gonna happen here is the, uh, the software is gonna um, put this into the center position, take a picture, um, move it um, that way, take another, then pull it down, take another, release that side so it's in the center and then work its way around. Take all those nine um, individual images and then interpolate those together to create that 12 megapixel picture. Now I've just had to think about whether I actually want to pull these um, these bits apart to actually find out exactly what these are. Um, the Some of the marketing material does say that um, they're pizza electric, um, which is a distinct possibility, uh, but without destroying it, I won't be able to find out really. Um, actually, if I measure the DC resistance, um, that might give me a clue. Right, just uh, looking at the DC resistance, it was there in the range of mega ohms and then just went up and then off scale. So um, that probably does indicate that those are piezoelectric. So I think what I'm gonna do is just reassemble this. I'll pop it on the shelf for a few months and um, see whether I can actually turn up one of the interface cards and the software. I think the chances of that are pretty slim though. Um, Cause it'd be nice just to try it out and see what it can do. Okay, so I hope you found that one interesting. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Share, comments, all that sort of stuff is always welcome. Uh, thanks to all the people who support this channel, uh, my patrons, um, PCB Way and all the people that like and share. Thank you very much, and I will see you on the next video. Bye for now.